Hey, I'm Eddie Wu, and I'm super excited to be with you today from the Powerhouse Museum, where we're not just in any exhibition, we're in the exhibition for Maiton, Australia's Guitar. And there's a phenomenal number of instruments here that I'm really delighted to be able to unpack with you, with Damien McDonald, who is the curator for this exhibition. Damien, great to Eddie, see you. How Thank you, going? you so much for joining us. Thank now, you. these instruments are amazing. Maiton is a really important Australian uh, instrument maker. Can you tell us a bit about this exhibition and why it matters? So Maiton is an Australian company, Australian guitar company, uh, and they make guitars out of Australian timber. Uh, and the founder, Bill May, he started making guitars out of Australian timber. Try and find a native timber mm. that would work with guitars. Uh, and, he, and he has found a couple, as it mm. turns out. Uh, Australian blackwood and Queensland maple. Uh, are both woods that are still used in Maiton guitars. He started the company back in 1946. Wow. So he was a, he was a woodwork teacher, mm -hmm. so carpenter by trade. Man after my own heart, yep. education is heart. Exactly, yeah, and he was, uh, he was an educationalist as well, mm -hmm. um, but he's, he really wanted to make instruments, so his wife urged him to, to leave his job as a teacher and just concentrate on making instruments, uh, and that's what he's kept doing. And what a wealth of instruments we can see here. I mean, even just standing back and looking at the small section here, there's such variety in these different instruments. Um, I noticed that not only do we have these, you know, six and 12 string guitars over here, but these, I mean, this particular instrument here is enormous. It's not a six string guitar, it's a bass guitar. Can you tell us a little bit about these instruments? So this, is, this one's quite interesting because, because of the physics in it. So um, it's a bass guitar, so the low notes in the musical register, um, so big, thick strings mm. to create that low note. Uh, very, very long scale um, to create, you know, a long note, mm -hmm. which is the, the bottom end notes. And also, so, uh, for those who maybe don't ha play an instrument themselves, the, the longer the note is, that's the, the deeper sound that it creates, which is why yeah. we're thinking about basses, right? Yeah. Right. And what was the other thing you were going to point out? Uh, I was just going to point out the construction of the body. Mm. So a really big resonant body. So mm. um, the bigger the, the body, the, the deeper the sound mm. or, the, or the more resonance it can create with a lower note. Mm, fantastic. So as we look across some of these instruments, again, fantastic variety here. Um, I wonder if you could tell us a bit about, you know, Bill May, he didn't just want to make guitars copying, you know, Fender or Gibson. He wanted to be quite characteristically strange. You talked about the materials. Can you say more about the designs and how they're distinctive? Yeah, so, so Bill, he wasn't interested in getting into the market to make copies of established guitars, particularly Fender, Gibson guitars. Uh, he wanted to create his own unique Australian guitars. So he did a lot of experimentation with the shapes of the guitars, uh, where the pickups would be, the, the microphonic part that amplifies the strings, um, different configurations of where the knobs would go. And, and each of the instruments is quite unique. So they're all handmade as well. So from 1946 up until now, the, the guitars that will be made in the factory today are still handmade, so they're very unique guitars. But yeah, he wanted to create a unique Australian guitar, so that's why there's so much, such a variety of guitars in this collection. Mm -hmm. And that artistry, it's pretty on show when you have a look at these much smaller instruments. These are ukuleles. I think of Maiton making guitars. I didn't even realise originally that he made these. Yeah, so Bill May, was he loved Hawaiian music. So back in the 40s, uh, he played Hawaiian music. He'd made a, a number of ukes for himself and for his friends. Uh, so that's what, actually what he started making. The mm. first instru in, instruments that Bill May made were ukuleles. Mm. Um, and something that, that's interesting about ukuleles is the different shapes. So this one up the top here, I noticed, doesn't have the shape of a guitar, which sort of tapers in. It's kind of... Well, it's a sort of pineapple shape, isn't That's it? That's right. It's a pineapple. That's what they're called. They're actually called pineapple ukes. Um, and they come from Hawaii. So uh, ukuleles are a Hawaiian instrument. Mm. And the traditional Hawaiians made them in the shape of a pineapple. Mm. And when the Europeans uh, visited Hawaii and, and loved the sound of the ukulele as well, they adopted it. But their idea of a stringed instrument uh, acoustic stream instrument was the Spanish guitar. Mm. So that's why we've got ukuleles in that shape. So concert ukuleles and pineapple ukuleles. That's fantastic. So the geometry underneath these of these different shapes are actually culturally significant as yeah, well. Yeah. And there are instruments here that, I mean, if I have a look at these guys here, most people would not even think that these are guitars. Could you describe to people who've never seen an instrument like this before, what are we looking at? How's it even played? So this is a lap steel guitar. So, and it, it is different different to a guitar. So um, you don't play it 
like that, strumming it while you're holding it. This one is set up like a little table. So there's legs attached to the bottom of it uh, and you sit underneath it. And instead of strumming and fretting the, the, the notes, this one, you actually use a metal slide. Um, and you'll see on here that the strings are really far off that, that fretboard. They're very highly raised, aren't they? That's right. So on a guitar, you press down on the strings. It presses on a particular part of the guitar neck, um, which changes the note. Mm. These ones, just the strings, are, you know, they're tuned differently. Mm. Um, but you change the pitch of it by sliding that metal slide on, mm. on the guitar. That's and fantastic. people would have heard it in country and western songs, that very right. sad kind of sound mm. is, is usually a slide guitar. Absolutely. Now, we've been talking about all these instruments, but I'm actually even more interested about your life as a curator. You know, creating something like this, obviously there's a whole team of people involved. I'm really interested in what are the different kinds of skills that contribute to this, and also what are the numbers and mathematics under creating an exhibition? Right, so there's a, there's a big team. There's a big team at the museum that put on these exhibitions. So. Uh, I'm the curator, so I come up with the ideas, uh, I research the things that we want to put into the collection and into exhibitions. Uh, so for this one, I researched the guitars, had a look at the guitars we'd like to display, um, selected the ones that, that represent the story the best way, uh, and then we, we get a team of people who look after the collection. So we have registrars and conservators. Registrars are the people who um, care for the, the, the objects when they come to the museum. Conservators are the people who care for the material. So if something's damaged, they repair it or they make sure that it doesn't get damaged any further. Uh, then there's designers. So we have designers and there's a lot of mathematics involved in design. Mm. So we have graphic designers who, who create all the graphics that are in exhibitions, so the signage um, and all the labels. And of course there's maths that goes into that. So they have to make sure that it fits in a particular space um, and all the letters look neat, uh, legible, mm. of, a, of a particular size. And then there's the exhibition designer. So that's, that's like an architect really, or an interior designer. Uh, and what that person does is look at all the objects that we've picked, and then that person places them uh, in a plan of the exhibition space. And that's really where the maths comes into it. So mm. in this particular display, we have a 42 meter long wall of guitars. Now guitars all have their own dimensions. Mm. So we took dimensions of all the guitars, and then we worked out what's the best way to fit these on a 42 metre long wall mm. and make them look like they're in a pattern. Mm. So laying them out all in a straight line mm. um, because there's a lighting array that goes with this display. Uh, and then also having a gap in between them that's, that's equal mm. and neat and symmetrical. Mm. So a lot of maths that went into that. So there's a huge part of the aesthetics of this and it creating this visual effect actually comes from the measurements and the arrangement. And again, there's a lot of geometry underneath. Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. Are there any of these guitars that are really special to you? Um, the one, my favorite guitar in this whole array is this one. Um, and it's really, it's, it's really the aesthetics of it that mm. I love. So it's called a Wedgetail, a Maiton Wedgetail from the early 1970s. Um, Wedgetail, you know, it's a very Australian name, mm. Wedgetail Eagle. What I like about it is it's got a particular tail. Mm. So the tail piece of this guitar is dead straight mm. um, and that's quite unusual. I haven't really seen that on many uh, guitars before mm. um, and it's just got a beautiful shape to it mm. and I love that sunburst design mm. so um, the idea of, of blending the colours into a lighter lighter shade I just love it. It. It, is, it is a thing of beauty. Now, uh, one of the things I love about playing the guitar is that because it's a, you know, when you look at a piece of guitar music, it's actually full of numbers. I mean, all yeah. musical notes are numerical in some way, but yep. so when you look at an actual guitar, you know, tablature, the numbers are there very clearly showing you the numbers and patterns underneath this. Yep. And one of the things that I think is great, both you and I actually play the guitar. Yep. So it seems fitting as a way to kind of round off and experience this exhibition. Maybe we should, uh, Come over here and we've actually got both of our instruments. Do you want to have a bit of a jam? I reckon we should. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pick this guy up and try not to bang it on the floor. And um, just as sort of getting into here, um, this, these are both Maiton guitars. Yep. Uh, this is an acoustic six string and you've got a bass. Uh, you know, can you tell us why uh, you've got not just you know, this kind of guitar but this? 
Uh, so the bass guitar, it, it provides the bottom end of the sonics. So um, in an ensemble, and, and we're an ensemble of two, um, the guitar is providing the mid-range sonics and the high sonics. Um, so you've got more strings on there. You've got mm. more strings that have a higher pitch to them. Um, the bass only has four strings, but they're much thicker, longer strings, mm. uh, and they provide that longer wavelength. Mm. And when they're together, um, the different pitch, even though we might be playing the same note, there's a nice effect, chorus effect. Mm. Um, or, or if I'm playing a harmony, that changes the chord um, completely. Mm. Um, but in an ensemble, you have a full range of sonics then with a mm. six string guitar and a four string bass. I think, you know, you were talking about um, harmony before and even playing the same note but at different octaves. Um, many people at home who play musical instruments are aware of this, but for those who aren't, you know, uh, we have actually the notes of our strings, uh, an E, A, D and G, yep. um, they're the same, um, but playing different octaves, the reason they sound so melodious together is that the ways which make up those different sound forms, um, they line up. The, um, the high parts line up with the, the high parts, um, the troughs match up with the troughs, and that's what um, appears to our ear as something which is pleasing, which I think is fantastic, that we can hear the mathematics even if we don't necessarily know what's going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Fantastic. All right, well, I'm going to get my, my pick out here, and uh, Damien, do you want to count us in? Okay. Two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 